2020 was kind of a rough year for music. Delays, disappointment, and dick riding. The holy trinity. I mean, we really only got a whole lot of red because Carty got exposed for being an absentee father. Given, that's a pretty small price to pay for Jump Out the House. But once the year was over, there wasn't that many stand-ups that people talk about today. Uzi's initial release was disappointing. Legends Never Die felt like a fan project. And let's be honest, did anyone know that Big Sean released? On my tombstone, it's gonna say, I deserve to be here because I signed Big Sean. Now, don't get me wrong, there were many good albums released in 2020, but it was just missing those big releases. I'm talking that 2013 shit. 2013 was a brilliant year for music, and 2021 may actually be the year to compete with the number of colossal albums we've been given. Boys were certified lovers. Don Tolliver's Load was widely enjoyed by men everywhere, and there's still no sign of Frank Ocean. Where the fuck is he? So sit back, relax, start a beef with an actual child as we look back on this year in music. Welcome to Ibby's 2021 Spotify Wrapped Apple Music Extravaganza Listening Party 1 of 3, sponsored by Tidal. And a video that's going to be held behind a $200 paywall. Game's the game. Jermaine? Cole? I think it was Metro Boomin who said it best when he said, <clears throat> If you can truly listen to J. Cole all the time, then you have yet to have the pussy that will change your life be. Real shit. Jermaine is the most humble man of all time. What other rapper will dress like as a homeless man fiending on the streets of New York, but has the amount of money to buy a pizza hut franchise hanging out the back of his pocket? Let's talk about the offseason. As the first big boy release of the year, the bar was low. Now contrary to some heat that Jermaine takes, I really do think he's one of the better rappers out there. But For Your Eyes Only was literally six years ago. And that was the last time I really think Cole released anything of his talent. And when Jermaine releases an album, it can go into one or two categories. And I'm undecided on this one because it has some absolute stone cold bangers. Pride is the devil, let go of my hand, Baz and Cole are yet to miss together in my eyes, but there's just so many forgettable tracks that they all kind of blend together. I listened to this album a week ago, and if you put a gun to my head and asked me to hum the melody of three of the songs, I'm fucking dead. I will say this though, my life had me doing some Ratatouille type shit in my head. Strong, strong contender for song and feature of the year with that verse from 21. But if I'm being honest, you give me a choice between this and one French Montana song, I'm picking this album. I don't think I've ever listened to a French Montana song. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? Now, best beef, obviously, I mean, everyone knows this, it's DaBaby and Jojo Siwa, two veterans of the rap game, both really coming to the height of their powers. And if I'm being honest with you, it seemed like it was inevitable for these two pillars of the rap game to collide at some point. And once it happened, only one of them could come out on top. DaBaby did draw first blood, with arguably the most unnecessary bar of all time directed in a freestyle towards a child and he can take that one to his grave. No one's taking the title from him. But in all fairness to Jojo Siwa, the baby lost all credibility as soon as his height was brought into the question. Why did this happen? Honestly, 2021 was like a fever dream. Drake the kind of guy to tell you nothing suspicious or against the Geneva Convention happened on Tiananmen Square, 1989. Boys were certified lovers this year, and that's a fact. Now listen, I've had my gripes with Drake and how disappointing I found his last couple of albums. But at my heart, listen, I'm a fan. Take care, nothing was the same, thank me later, and even some parts of Views are some of my favourite rap albums of all time. And really, I had my hopes up for Certified Lover Boy. I wholeheartedly wanted and foolishly believed that Drake was to go on and reinvent his music. To show how much he's grown, not just as an artist, but as a person. Learning from his beefs with some of the biggest players in the industry. As a public figure. As a father. I was stupid. Look at that fucking cover. That visualizer haunts me to this day. Why do they keep looking at me? Certified Boy Lover does have some really good highs. Knife Talk with 21. Poppy's Outside. I Miss You Too with Kuda is a personal favorite of mine. And Fair Trade with Redacted. We can't speak about him yet, it's not allowed. But the problem with Certified Cousin Lover is that there are just so many skippable and boring tracks. Songs that are just the generic Drake cut and paste classic, obviously taken from the thousand songs he spammed during the Views era, chucked them in the vault with a couple Michael Jackson features and called it a day. Out of the hour 26, I'd say that he really only needed about 45 minutes of that. Now listen, am I implying that Aubrey, Drizzy, Drake, Graham released more lukewarm songs for the very sake of impacting his streaming numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, 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 you guys are stupid, are you crazy, are you dumb, which one? You could pick one. Overall, Certified Brother Lover is safe. It'll appease the Drake fans and a lot of his mainstream followers, but is it as good as DJ Academic says it is? 
No. Academics, did it cure world hunger? I don't think so. And for that reason, I'm out. Call Me If You Get Lost is definitely an album that was released this year. And honestly, I kind of enjoyed it. And I'm not even that big a fan of Tyler's stuff. The vibes are immaculate aided heavily by some of the best merch and aesthetic for an album I've ever seen. Will I elaborate further on the actual music? Of course not. We do a little trolling, it's called We Do A Little Trolling. What I will say, however, is I cannot wait till the new influx of Tyler fans discover his old music. Personally, I got no problem with it, but I can guarantee you, there's a large portion of his fans that if they listen to Tron Cat just one time, their literal head would explode. It's a weird tangent, I know, but it's crazy how long he's been in the game, and there's entire parts of his discography that sort of go missing and people forget about. Overall, decent three from me. Are you fucking dumb? You guys, uh, you heard about this disease? King of New York, King of the World. Small time, hardly known newcomer to the game Nas has hit it out the park yet again with King's Disease 2. It encapsulates most of the things I want to hear from a Nas album, while still pushing him a bit music wise. However, it did have Eminem talking about Santa Claus for about two minutes on EPMD. Standard Eminem feature in the current year. I give that a, a world is yours out of 10. And now to the most coveted award, my rapper of the year. And to no one's surprise, it goes to Smiley. The flow, the uniqueness, he really just has come into his own. When Drake co-signed him, I was skeptical. But as soon as I heard that first song, oh, I was hooked. Prada and Gucci don't go together, Louis and Dior. I Pure lyrical poetry. I don't know how the fuck this guy has a career. They may have killed Pac, but not the idea. Speed run time, baby. Silk Sonic gives Kids See Ghost a run for its money by being arguably one of the best 20 minute albums I've ever heard. A very solid release with very little fat. And man, just look at these two. I can't love them at the Grammys. Come on. I want to snort some cocaine with them. The House is Burning by Isaiah Rashid. Rashid? Was okay. I heard a lot of hype about this album. And when I got around to it, in a word, I'll be honest, I thought it was kind of mid. Holy shit, guys. TLOP 5 released The Life of Pablo 5. If we're fucking skipping 2 to 4 and we're going straight to number 5. Pierre, would you like to come out here and explain as to why for one week you ruled over the world? You couldn't go on the internet without hearing something about this album. But then, it vanished. I hadn't heard a single word about this album after those 7 days. And that's not to say it's bad. It was good, it's fucking Pierre Bourne. And he made a very solid album. He still ain't got shit on Retro though. You want some more? Uh, Juice World definitely released an album in 2021. I don't hate my life enough to enjoy Juice World like that though. If you bump in that from the morning man, more power to you. I hope you get out of that dark place. Overall, I thought it was definitely a Juice World album. An improvement on Legends Never Die, but CCP propaganda sounds better than that. Dr. Dre caught a lot of flack, however, over his apparent disrespect to him in the song he did for the GTA remaster. But I figured it out. He didn't mean no disrespect, he was just so thirsty, he needed like a world of juice. He wasn't even talking about the rapper, he just wanted like a Mario Galaxy 2 juice themed world. And honestly, can you blame him? If you guys could have one whole world of juice, what flavour would it be? Don Tolliver's load was something I enjoyed so, so much. Now I heard the boldest man of all time, Anthony Fantano, did not enjoy the load. But honestly, I think you just gotta be a load aficionado. Comparisons to his breakout album, OK I Pull Up, are bound to be made. And the general consensus that I heard was disappointment, but I disagree. Whilst the writing on the album does need some serious work, the production, the hooks and the melodies have only improved in my opinion. I really enjoy this sort of Don Tolliver, but what stands out on this album the most is the production. Now once you get Mike Dean in that booth, it's raps, you're gonna get something decent, but he went above and beyond on some of these songs. Shout out Mike Dean, if anyone's happy in this world I hope it's him. I don't know why, but I always thought Don Tolliver was fat. That might just be a retarded moment for me, but I always thought he was like a Rod Wave looking dude. He's, he's not, and when I found that out I was kind of disappointed. His voice just sounds like he'd be like a fucking like big dude, a little fatty. I'm sorry. Best verse of the year, and it's overwhelmingly 3000 on Life of the Party. Though a couple 21 tracks do come close. Without a doubt, this is one of the most heartfelt and beautiful verses I've heard in a very long time. The pain and emotion of him describing how much his mother and family really meant to him, almost confessing and begging for one last conversation with her, is something that really just stood out to me. Wow, a whole section without a joke. We really are maturing. I always knew I wanted to be gay. Yeah. Now listen! That's called motherfucking bars, nigga! Fucking you know nothing about that! That right there, that's real fucking hip-hop. This is that real shit. 
Upon Punk's initial release, I'd say I found it disappointing. However, like so much music nowadays, it takes time for me to really appreciate it. I feel like this is the sort of thug I can really get behind, as the main themes behind this album are maturity and growth. And at times, it's clear that this is exactly what he's going for, with tracks like Stupid Slash Asking, Stressed and Hate the Game, but it's met with a couple speed bumps along the way which kind of kill that vibe and direction. It leaves me caught in between two minds here, you have Thug taking his music in a whole different direction, while still leaving a couple generic Thug hitters in there. Overall, Punk grew on me with each listen, but what will always kill me is that it's shown me what I could have had, and then doesn't fully deliver on that promise. The jaded individual inside of me can't continue to talk about these albums where you'll at least find some sort of enjoyment. I've got a hate. It's so hardwired in my brain that I've just got to spread this discontentment. Some people are put on this earth to do great things. I was put on this earth to fucking hate. Culture 3, is it just me or have the Migos, have they lost that touch? That infectious repetition of words just doesn't hit the same anymore. I really think it comes down to stagnancy in their music, as the novelty has pretty much just worn off. And when you compare it to the almost impeccable first instalment, the very good second one, this one really does come up short. And like all bad albums, they have a really shit Drake verse on them. So there's really no surprises. Culture 3 all but confirms that Takeoff is really the only Migos we need. Lock the other two out of the studio for all I care. Uh, Logic, uh, Logic came out of retirement. Guys, uh, you remember that? No? Neither did I. To every yin, there's a yang. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. To every certified lover boy, there's a Donda Deluxe. I'm sorry. <laughs> However your goons, don't kill me. I'm sorry. Now we both knew this was coming. It was really a question of how long I would be able to contain myself. I won. We got the album. But at the cost of his family. Small price to pay for Jump Out the House. Reflecting on Donda pretty much a year later, the whole experience, even if you didn't like the album, you can't knock the uniqueness of the rollout. There's few rappers out there that could sell out an arena multiple times for an exclusive look at an album that hasn't released. There's even fewer who could be two hours late to their own show, play a clearly unfinished version of their album with a faulty sound system inside said stadium, and then sell it out again two weeks later, while still being late to their own show again. I'm so fucking sick of looking at this screen, I get PTSD. All while live streaming getting a fucking haircut. All in all, That's just some yay shit. the set design throughout the shows as well really did make this rollout special. The goons, him being ascended towards heaven, and the closing shot of him running out of his burning childhood home to reunite with Kim in a wedding dress. That didn't age the best. Never abandon your family. It's just basically DTF. <laughs> bro, please, bro, why are you do- Reuniting for the first time in almost a decade with Jay-Z on Jail was definitely one of the highlights of the album and year in general. Paired with assembling an all-star cast of features, from Baby Keem and Jay Electronica to holding 5 year old family at gunpoint for that off-the-grid verse, the features on this album in some respect help kind of tackle the main issue with Donda, and that's the length. At 27 songs standing at almost 2 hours in length, it's a fucking long ass album. And listen, I love his work, but I'm not happy with the length, but at least content with it. There's not one song, bar maybe the Pop Smoke tribute, that I didn't at least enjoy to some extent at first. There's definitely a case to be made that there's a couple skips on the album, and there's no denying that. But for a project to be this long and to explore so many genres throughout it, and still sound this good, is actually incredible. You had Kanye on a drill track, singing on 24. Motherfucker, we got Hurricane. It's just been, a, it's been a long fight. It's been a long fight and I just had to have a warrior spirit. Uh, but did you guys notice that uh, Hurricane is like literally a hurricane? The weekend's first verse is the calm before the storm. Lil Baby, the waves rise and winds hit. And on the weekend's second verse, it's calm again. Then Kanye, the storm starts again. And then with the weekend, everything resets to calm. I think we need to line up a lot of Kanye stands and shoot them in the fucking head. I'm begging you, man. Go outside. Take a, take a well-needed break. And I gotta say, free my boy Ann Clemens. He ain't locked up, I just want his vocals back. Donda overall, I thought was, come on, my favorite album of the year. Let's not, I'm not even gonna joke about it. I really enjoyed the album. 
I thought it was great. Solid 8 to 9 out of 10. And although some people would say there's some very skippable tracks and that some of it is quite mid, I, I pretty much enjoyed most of it. Believe what I say, heaven and hell, praise God. Those three, I gotta say, probably my top three favorite tracks. But he cut Soldier Boy off of Moon. 0 out of 10, worst album of all time. No, you can't be on my mama album. Fuck you, Kanye. I love you, Pete Davidson. Good night.